Hi everybody, welcome back to Rose Molling with Art of Lisa. I hope you've all been well out there. I've been doing great, just been super busy with life in general, so, um, but I decided it was time I really need to get back to doing some videos. So I hope you enjoy some time with me today, just having fun with my brush, my palette, and a canvas. All right, let's go down to my table. Here we go. All right. Many of you have been with me for quite a while and have seen me paint and just had fun with my brush. And that's basically what I'm going to do today is just remember, it's just paint. You know, sometimes myself, like everybody else, we kind of have times where you just don't feel like things are flowing. And that's kind of how it's been lately. But you know what? The best way to break that is just to dive in. All right, let's see what I'm going to create. So right now I am using a Royal and Lang Nickel number six. It's a filbert brush, it's quite large. I've got my Joe Sonia acrylic paints here in my wet palette, all set to go. Not sure what I'm planning on creating, but I'm just going to kind of go with it. So let's see what we got here. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. I think I'm just going to start with straight line down the side here and let's just go. So I am using yellow oxide to start. Why I decided to use yellow oxide, I don't know, it's just the color that called to me to start with. Now remember when you're using acrylic paints, they're going to dry darker than when they first appear here. So as I do these C strokes, I know I'm going to end up coming back and highlighting them and giving them a little more, oh, punch per se. Let's see, let's maybe take some aqua and do a long S stroke coming down. This is really just a study that I'm doing and using the C's and S strokes. I don't quite have, like I said before, a set idea of what I want to paint with this. I just want to have fun with my brush. Now, I'm using a kind of a dry technique here. I don't have any medium in my brush and I'm letting the canvas come through my paint here. It gives a neat light to dark effect just using that canvas behind you. A nice S stroke here. Just come up. Let's see here. Let's continue this line. I going to do with this? I don't know. Let's see. Let's come over here now. Now again, if you notice, I'm pulling the brush strokes towards me. So I'm turning my brush or turning the canvas and pulling the brush towards me. It's always easier to pull towards you than it is to push away. So we've got a little more of that yellow oxide. I did a little bit of aqua, a little bit of warm light, and I'm letting it just combine on my brush. Now this isn't quite the traditional rose mulling that you might do. Like I said, this is just having fun with the brush and with colors, going into some red earth and pulling it towards me, letting the brush lift up. Now, rose mulling is traditionally an oil, wet on wet technique, and I do paint with oils, though I switched over to acrylics, and many of you know this, I switched over to acrylics when I was expecting my first daughter. And just because I didn't want to have the smell I wanted a little easier cleanup. A little 
did I realize that that was actually going to be a real transition for me in switching from oils. It wasn't my intention to switch to acrylics, but you know, sometimes things happen and I find that I really enjoy it. There is definitely a learning technique with switching from oils to acrylics. All right, so I'm just kind of basing my C strokes around that line formation there. Let's see, maybe we can do, I like the red coming off of there. I like this coming here. Oh, what can we do? And again, notice I'm just using my paper towel here. I'm just scrubbing out my brush. It's still very dry. I mean, it's still a little bit of paint on here, but as you can see, I'm not pulling a lot of paint out on my hand. Oh, what can we do? Maybe a happy little flower formation in here. Let's do some more with that red earth. Oh, let's pull another C stroke here. Just right down. Again, I'm just having fun with this. A lot of times when I'm working on uh, commission pieces or pieces that I'm going to teach, then I will definitely take a little bit more time to design and figure out what I want to do with it. But like I said, sometimes it's just fun to play with the paint. Let it flow. There's no right or wrong answer to it. Notice I'm just layering paint here. I'm pulling some white on top of that yellow and just pulling up. By pulling up quickly like that, I can go from that painted portion to using the canvas as a um, to give the paint or give that flower depth here. Maybe we'll do a, pull a little S stroke here. Kind of finish that flower. And pull a little bit down. Now obviously detailing that I'll come back to later will help pull this all together. So I'm doing everything in this one brush. You know, I have lots and lots and lots and lots of brushes. But sometimes all you need is one. All right, let's see what else we can do here. So I'm trying to balance my color. I need to come back and pull a little bit more of that yellow oxide on top. And just pull it down. I'm not going to pull it all the way down. I'm giving it some depth here. There we go. Start making it pop a little bit. A little pop layer in there. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. What do I want to do? I think I want to just go down this way. Maybe I'll pull another flower formation here. Let's pull some more red. This is actually Norwegian orange that I'm using. That's some red earth. I use a paint by Chroma Ink. It's the Joe Sonia line. Joe Sonia Jensen is a decorative artist and rose mauler. And all oh, these paints were developed quite a long time ago for her. And when I initially started with oils, or with acrylics, I mean, this was the paint that I started and learned on. And I have found that for myself, I really enjoy these paints. I get a feel of, uh, and a look of oils when I'm done quite frequently. And uh, oh, I, I like using them. Hmm. Okay, nice and bright here. Maybe I'll throw some green in here. Like I said, this is, this is just fun. Balance some color in here. Maybe another. Let's get a few more flowers in here. And get some green. Just kind of pull them together. Again, I'm pulling these strokes towards me. They're just a fun C stroke. 
C strokes can be nice and big, like what you find in your foundation of your design, or they can be little strokes, much like a little comma stroke you'll see in decorative painting. It's the idea of the basic shape of it, and it's all about pressure. I'm pushing down on my brush and pulling back up. Push down, pull up. A lot of times I like to say it's like an airplane. It's taking off. If you notice, I'm just layering my paint here. Layering it on there. Add a little sepal there. We're going to need one more little flower coming off the side. Maybe we'll, we'll play with some whites here. Just a nice little formation here. Just fun. Oop. Let's see, maybe a little more. Oh, a little red earth and the little aqua here. Just making it pop. That's kind of a nice flow. Let's see, what else can we do here? Now, well, maybe we'll detail this. Let's detail this and see what we come up with, and then we'll figure out how we can finish this. Now, I want my brush to sit and not dry out on me, so I'm going to take a smaller piece of my paper towel, and I'm going to wet it down. So I have this wetted down. I'm going to simply put my brush inside of it and put it to the side right now. If I'm going to let it sit for a long time, I will wrap that in paper towels. So that, not paper towels, in a plastic wrap as well as the paper towel. So that way, when I come back to it, it's nice and fresh. It won't dry out on me. Because that is one of the things with acrylics. You're going to have it dry out on you. All right, so I'm going to take a nice liner here. And let's give some detail to it. Ready? Here we go. Pulling my brush, make sure that's not going to drip on me. That's, so right now I'm using a Low Cornell 7050 script liner, and it's a number one. And I still might come in and add a little more color to this. I'm just using my brush, pushing it down, pulling up, push down, lift up, push down, and roll it around. Now, I have been rose mulling for many years, so my brush is kind of like an extension of my arm and my hand is kind of fun. Notice I'm using my other arm, my left arm, as a brace because when I'm holding my brush, I'm pretty much holding it straight up and down. Maybe a slight angle to it. But this way I can be on top of my painting. If I were down here, I wouldn't have as much, it would be much harder for me to pull my brush longer distances. Because I'm using my arm as a brace, I can really move it wherever I want to. Let's see. And again, I'm moving my canvas and making it so I could pull my brush towards me. If you notice, I'm not always following perfectly around the shape, sometimes a little outside of it. The style of rose modeling that I'm doing here is called Telemark. Telemark is from the Telemark region of Norway. Norway is really interesting with its decorative arts, uh, folk art here, because Norway, being a very mountainous country that it is, only 3% of the land is tillable, you have all these valleys, and when the decorative arts, the C strokes, the S strokes, the Cantus carving that came through in the 1600s and so. Well, when it came to Norway, because 
Norway had all these different regions, these shapes, all based on sea strokes and S-strokes, all took a life of their own, depending on the styles that were prevalent in their regions. So it's really interesting how many different styles you can learn in rose modeling. So telemark is a very asymmetrical kind of free-flowing style. It makes it a great style to do for demonstrations like this where you can just let your brush flow. There's other styles which are very symmetrical that, you know, and maybe thicker in the paint, so that takes a little longer. I would probably spend a little more time designing, you know. So we'll do that next time. I'll do a hauling doll next time. Oh, there's so many styles. Vestagda and Ustagda and Trundelag. Valdras and Gudbrand style. Just so much fun. And when you think you know a lot, then you find out that you really know nothing. And you go back and you learn more. I'm always a student of rose modeling. Just like anything in life, you know. Never assume that you're the foremost authority because none of us ever are. And it's so much fun to learn. Again, like I like to say, it's just paint. There's no right or wrong way. You know, I might look at this afterwards and say, eh, maybe not my best. Or I might look at it later and step away from it and say, you know, that was actually kind of fun. Again, I'm just playing with my brush. I'm just having fun with it. Maybe I'll put this brush down a little bit here. Let me take my big brush back out. Let's pop in some brighter colors here. Just a little bit here and there. Alright, I think we need to take a little vermilion and highlight this red here. And I know I've already detailed some of it, but you know, it's okay to come back. Pop in a little color. Now, again, when you're studying other people's work and you, you work with their design, well, I, I can speak for myself. If you're playing with my designs that you've seen, you've ordered them, remember, don't worry if you don't paint it exactly like I do. Each one of us is our own special creation by God. You know, we're each individuals. We're each going to have a different feel to it. Just popping some more white there. Let's see, what can we do here? Let's see if we can pull another flower up here. Mm. It's easier when I do this technique of pulling the brush strokes if because I want that light to dark here, or dark, yeah, light, light to dark, that's correct. It's easier to pull these brush strokes towards me and lift up, because then I can really get that, utilize that canvas behind me. There we go. Oh, the pop of a little red there. Take some more of that yellow and just pull some strokes down. And notice I'm pulling them so they're coming down that they'll reach down into the sepal there. Because when you look at flowers out in nature, remember this is based on real nature. It's kind of fantasy flowers, but it's it's based on nature. That they all pull down to that sepal. They pull down to the root of your design. Let's see here. Let's add a flower coming off here. I'm just using, I'm using a lot of C strokes. I'm not using a lot of S strokes here. It's 
easier. Here, let's throw an S stroke here. There we go. Let's get that S stroke in there. Because those S strokes really are important. And those S strokes really make up a lot of your um, leaf formations. Let's do one here. Maybe one off the top here. One in white. There's an S. Another little S there. And it kind of gives that leaf thing going off. All right. Again, this is just a study. No right or wrong way. Just having fun. Maybe I'll pull something off the top of this. Let's see. Maybe some white and yellow. And we'll just pull right around. Pull right around. So this is one of those things I'll just keep playing with. Most of the time a piece, oh, it almost looks a little peacockish there. Most of the time when I'm working on really a, like I said, a commission piece or one that I'm putting on my Etsy page or designing for a class, I will take a much longer time doing it. Really think it out. Just plan. You want to make sure it, it fits the piece that you're designing, whether it's a clock or a hope chest or a wooden plate. And remember, this is typically done on wood. So doing on a canvas is kind of a more modern idea of doing rose mulling. But, you know, you have to play around with more modern, modern, modern. <laughs> modern ideas too because you know how do you keep an art form growing oh well, you play around with it but it's still important to stick to the foundations of it because that's what makes it what it is well this is fun oh, a lot of fun here all right now, let's see if we can get a little bit more of this detailing in before we sign off for today. I thank you all for, you know, coming back and being patient for any of my videos. I have a number of videos on my page that actually show you how to do stroke work and line work. You know, feel free to check those videos out and, you know... If you're interested in trying it, pull out some brushes, try some paint. You don't need a lot of paint. You can color two or three different colors. Now I'll put the brushes that I'm using in my notes down below. You'll find that I'll do that in my videos where I really discuss, you know, and demonstrate the brush strokes and really kind of give a mini lesson so look at the description and you'll you'll find the suggestions for brushes there's a lot of wonderful rose mulling teachers out there if you have a chance locally to take a class or take a class on zoom or anything like that definitely give it a try if it's something that interests you if it's something with your culture you're Norwegian and you want to learn and get back to your roots well that's awesome and if you're not of Norwegian descent well you know what the Vikings went everywhere and this is a wonderful art form for all people the other thing is it's so heavy in brush technique that really it will help you in any art form that you do with a brush that is just having fun with my brush, letting it flow. I have a medium that I have put together of three different mediums. I've discussed these before. It's a flow medium, a glaze medium, 
and a retarder to kind of give a little open space. Because remember, acrylics will dry fast on you. Okay. Let's see what else we can do here. Just throwing in my stem lines and they flow from the center. There we go. Again, this is a very much a modern take. Well, maybe not so modern. It's based on all of the traditional things, but just a fun take. Again, it's normally done on wood. When you do the wood, it takes time to sand and base coat and sand and base coat and antique or whatever you want to do with it. The nice thing with paint is your options are limitless. There's so much you can do. Let's come back in here. Let's get this a pop here. Alright, coming to the end. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed some time back in the studio with me. I plan to be making more videos. And I'll be teaching more classes online. Feel free to subscribe, hit that like button. And, you know, drop me a line. Sometimes a little slow in responding. Life has a way of <laughs> getting in the way. I'm still a very busy mom wife, all that fun stuff. All right. Very free flowing. I had some tendrils here. Just fun. Let's finish these little flowers here. Again, thank you guys for joining me. I wish you all a very blessed and happy day. I put blessings on you all. Here we go. All right. So, again, thank you for joining me. I'm Lisa of Rose Molling with Art of Lisa. And remember... It's just paint. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye.